All right, now it's time to tackle for three. And I'm only really going to have to do one of these problems because it's going to be the same method for both of them. So let me show you how this works. Um, this is the same data set I realized that we've been working with all along, but I'm going to have to redo it. And let me show you why in a second. Oops, got to highlight those and double click. There we go. All right, now if you look at the problem, it asks us to compute the coefficient of determination. We technically already did that. You don't realize it, but we did. Um, we did it twice, actually. Um, construct a residual plot. That's the problem. We didn't know that we had to do that. So when I ran the regression the first time, I didn't bother. So let me do it again. Data analysis, regression. And I'm going to tell it to go here for the y. Let me go here. Here for the axis. I have labels, and again, don't forget, those are backwards. I know it's weird, but that's just the way it goes. I'm going to have it output in D1, that's okay. And I'm going to tell it to do residuals this time. Um, excuse me, residual plots. I did not tell it to do that last time, and that's what I needed. So that's okay, and I'll say okay. And it constructs everything again. Let me make these a little bigger. Oopsie. That's okay. And then, I know you don't realize it. i got to move my video, sorry. Go back there. Over here on the right, there it is. It made the residual plot. You can drag it, right? Get to the corner and drag it, make it bigger. And it looks good. It looks, well, like somebody spit points up. Um, you want it to look like this. You don't want it to have like a pattern to it. If it has a pattern to it, like a U shape or something, that means that the data wasn't linear in the first place. It's got a little bit of a horn shape, but that's kind of forgivable in a data set that's this small. I wouldn't worry too much about that. All right, so let's go back and answer the questions. Compute the coefficient of determination. That's R squared. Right here where it says R squared, that my friends, is the coefficient of determination. A, let me make that bold and yellow. The residual plots over here, already done. I can label it B if I like. There it is. And then C, I normally wouldn't do this question for you guys, but I think this is kind of hard to figure out what's going on. So it says to interpret the coefficient of determination and comment on the adequacy of the linear model. So, for part C, oops, better make it bold. <sighs> the coefficient of determination is this guy right here. And what you do is you interpret it as a percentage. So you say 83% of the variability in the y variable. Now remember, your y variable's head circumference. So in head circumference of children is explained by our linear model from height, or based on height if you like. Enter. That's good. Okay, so what am I talking about? Well, let me go look at the graph for a second. We already built it, so let's look at it. Here in 4.2. Hey, look, there's the coefficient of determination again. What I'm saying is, why are these ones over here low and these ones over here high? What can explain that? How come every kid that's three years old doesn't just have the same head circumference? So I'm saying, well, 83% of why these kids are low and these kids are high can be explained by this model. Right? See how the model's low over here and high over here? But that means 17% of it, I'm not really certain why it's happening. It's due to other factors. Okay. Now back over here, the last thing they said was to comment on the adequacy of the model. All right, well, 83% is a nice percentage. Um, it definitely is good. So um, judging from R squared and from the residual plot having no pattern or horn shape, a linear model seems appropriate in this case. Oops, better make it bold. There we go. All right, because we don't want a pattern over here in the residuals, and we want a nice high percentage over here for our R squared to show us that a linear model was appropriate for this data. All right, there we go. We're done with 4.3. 4.3 number 29 works the same way, so you don't need to see it. It's the same stuff, although the answers might not be the same. Hint, 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 hint. All right, see you for chapter six.